to the examiners. I am Fatina bin Jabkaraza from Group 8. Our group will be presenting on Faye Glenn Abdillah, who developed the theory on 21 nursing problems. There are two parts on the professional background, which are education and achievements. I'm going to briefly talk about who is Faye Glenn Abdillah. She has dedicated her life to nursing as a researcher and as an educator. She was born on 13 March 1999 in New York City. She has helped in changing the nursing profession from a disease-centered approach to a patient-centered approach. She served as a public health nurse for 40 years, helping to educate the Americans about the needs of elderly and the dangers posed by AIDS, addiction, smoking, and violence. As a nursing professor, she has developed teaching methods based on scientific research. So what inspired her to become a nurse? It was when she and her brother witnessed a fire crash of a German passenger ship and saw the burned victims who escaped. At that moment, she felt powerless to help them and insisted that she would never be unprepared for when someone needs her help. She received her diploma in nursing at Fitkin Memorial Hospital School of Nursing, which is now called the N. May School of Nursing. Her diploma was sufficient to practice nursing, but Abdullah believed that nursing care should be based on research, not on the hours of care. So she later continued her degrees in Columbia University, where she received Bachelor of Science degree in nursing in 1945, then continued to receive Master of Arts degree in Physiology in 1947, and lastly received Doctor of Education degree in 1955. With her advanced education, Abdullah could have chosen to become a medical doctor, but she wanted a caring profession, so she continued to practice nursing instead. My name is Daphne Bowen David, matrix number 74546, and I will present more on Faye Abdillah's biography. Besides education, Faye Abdillah has made a name through many achievements and gained recognition in the nursing industry. Faye Abdillah is credited with developing the first nationally tested coronary care unit as an outgrowth of her work in Manchester. She also developed the patient assessment of care evaluation, which is also known as PACE, which is a system of standards used to measure the relative quality of individual healthcare facilities. This system is still utilized in the 21st century healthcare industry. She was also one of the first people in the healthcare industry to develop a classification system for patient care and patient-oriented records. The classification system have evolved in different ways within the healthcare industry, and Abdullah's work was foundationally in developing the most widely used form known as Diagnostic Related Groups, or also known as DRG. DRG is a standard coding system used by Medicare by categorizing patients according to particular primary and secondary diagnosis. It keeps healthcare costs down because each DRG code includes the maximum amount Medicare will pay out for a specific diagnosis and procedure while also taking into account patient age and length of stay in the healthcare facility. According to Levine and Abdila in 1984, DRG is a classification system for Medicare reimbursement and is used to determine the flat amount paid for each Medicare patient's discharge. During her 40-year career as a commission officer in the U.S. Public Health Service from 1949 to 1989, she assists and initiated numerous studies in countries such as Japan, China, Russia, Australia, and Scandinavian countries. She also served as a chief nurse officer from 1970 to 1987 and was the first nurse to achieve the rank of a two-star flag officer named by U.S. Surgeon General C. Everett Koop as the first woman and nurse deputy surgeon general from 1982 to 1989. Recognitions-wise, she was recognized as a leader in nursing research and nursing as a profession within In the Public Health Service, PHS, and as an international expert on health problems. Faye was also named a living legend by the American Academy of Nursing in 1994 and was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in 2000. She was inducted into the American Nurses Association Hall of Fame for a lifetime of contributions to nursing. Faye was also awarded with the Allied Signal Achievement Award and Sigma Theta Tau's Lifetime Achievement Award. Abdila's leadership, publications, and her lifelong contribution have set a new standard for nursing and healthcare. 
Her legacy for more than 60 years of extraordinary accomplishment lived nationally and globally. Aside from being the first nurse and the first woman to serve as a Deputy Surgeon General, Faye Glenn Abdillah also made a name in the nursing profession to formulate her 21 nursing problem theory. This theory has changed the focus of nursing from disease-centered to patient-centered and began to include the care of families and the elderly in the nursing care. My name is Melissa. Now I will present on person and environment for the meta paradigm of nursing. Firstly, person. According to Faye, she describes the recipients of nursing as individuals and also families. However, she does not portray her belief or assumptions regarding the nature of human beings. Secondly, environment. She defines environment as the home or community from which patient comes from. However, society is also included in the planning for an optimum health within the local, state and also international level. Thank you. Good day, my name is Nur Shafika binti Abdul Muin and my metric number is 76399. Now, I will continue present the nursing theory's definitions of the meta paradigm concept. So the third one is health. Health, or the achieving of it, is the purpose of nursing services. Although Faye Abdullah does not give a definition of health, but she speaks to total health needs and a healthy state of mind and body. Health may be defined as the dynamic pattern of functioning whereby there is a continued interaction with internal and external forces that results in the optimal use of necessary resources to minimize vulnerabilities. And the last one is nursing. Faye Abdullah defined nursing as a helping profession which include doing something to or for the person or providing information to the person. It is a comprehensive to individual, to family, and therefore to society. Abdullah's theory had interrelated concepts of health and nursing problems as well as problem solving. Hello, today I will be presenting about the application of the theory to nursing. I will be discussing on what theory is used for the application to nursing. So, the theory used is of the last 21 nursing problems typology. According to Fay Abdullah, nursing is based on an art and science that molds the attitudes, intellectual competencies, and technical skills of the individual nurse into the desire and ability to help people sick or well cope with their health needs. This typology of 21 nursing problems is a conceptual model mainly concerned with patients' needs and the role of nurses in problem identification using a problem analysis approach. Using the 21 nursing problems technique, the clinical practitioner could assess the patient, make a nursing diagnosis, and plan interventions. Abdullah's main goal is the improvement of nursing education. She believes that as the education of nurses improves, Nursing practice improves as well. It transforms the focus of the profession from being disease-centered to patient-centered. So, these are the 21 nursing problems typology created by Faye Abdillah. The purpose is to guide care and promote use of nursing judgment. Since there are 21 nursing problems listed by Abdullah, I will be discussing on 10 only. So the first one is to promote good hygiene and physical comfort, to promote optimal activity, exercise, rest and sleep, to promote safety through prevention of accidents, injury or other trauma and through the prevention of the spread of infection, 
to maintain good body mechanics and prevent and correct deformities to facilitate the maintenance of a supply of oxygen to all body cells to facilitate the maintenance of nutrition of all body cells to facilitate the maintenance of elimination to facilitate the maintenance of fluid and electrolyte balance to recognize the physiologic responses of the body to disease condition and to facilitate the maintenance of regulatory mechanisms and functions. That's all from me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Leslie Hanak Endoni. Today, I'm going to talk about case scenario to reflect the application of the theory. The case scenario that my team choose is that Anne was a 56 years old female diagnosed with asthma. She presented to the hospital on April 23, 2022. From her nursing home following an obstructed bowel that she had to have surgery. At the time of her assessment, it was noted that the patient had a stage 3 pressure ulcer of her left buttock. The patient was 99 kg with impaired mobility of her lower extremities. She was tested to reposition every two hours and have her wound flush with saline solution to assist with healing. In the 21 nursing laboratory created by VA Adila, one of her typology was related to promoting good hygiene and physical comfort. According to the case scenario above, when handling the patient, Madam N, we can apply VA Adila theory, which is promoting good hygiene and physical comfort and focusing on what education we can find that needs extra care. Since Madam N is a bedridden patient, she is unable to do self me. Taking into consideration whereby Madam N had surgery, has a stage 3 pressure also of her left botox. Pure hygiene could worsen the wound area and may lead to further complication and infection. For an example, we could perform back bath and oral play every morning and night if necessary and clean thoroughly on surgery, sign and pressure ulcer. Without proper cleaning of the wound site and surgery site, this could delay the time of recovery and could lead into infection of the site, which will arise more discomfort and pain to the patient. Therefore, by providing back bath and help patient with self grooming patient will feel fresh, regroom, and comfortable despite illness. Next, we could do positioning of middle end every two hours to maintain physical comfort and prevent new pressure as a sign. Not only that, positioning a bedridden patient can provide comfort for the patient and allow her body and limbs to move. We can position the right lateral position to prevent adding more pressure to the pressure also on her left buttocks. This is also to provide comfort and reduce the pain feel by patient. We can also ensure the place, the core, bear or personal belonging nearest to the patient. That's all for me. Thank you. Mm -hmm.